Section 1. Listening. There are two parts in this section. You will hear each part twice. After each part, you will have a 10 second pause to do. Part 1. You will hear an interview with woman, called Martha Stanston, who runs a mobile restaurant, that she sets up in different places. Choose the correct answer A, B or C for each of the following question. Today I'm talking to Marta Stanston, who runs her own mobile restaurant. Marta, how did you get into the restaurant business? Well, I learnt to cook at college. I always wanted to open my own restaurant, but had no money, so I got a job as a chef. I had all sorts of ideas for new dishes, which the staff thought would sell, but the guy who owned the place wasn't interested. That's when a friend told me about the mobile restaurant idea. It sounded great. Mm. Tell us about it. Well, it works like this. You decide on a menu. Obviously, you have to be able to cook. Then you advertise it so people can book a meal. The most amazing thing is all the advertising's done through social networking websites. People set up tables in their sitting room or in a city car park, an empty factory, anywhere in fact. And because you know how many people you're cooking for, food doesn't get wasted. So, why was it good for you? Well, various reasons. Like, I could buy all the ingredients without risk because you make customers pay in advance. The greatest advantage, though, is by having a maximum of 10 customers, I didn't need to hire a waiter. Then, of course, I could prepare everything at home. Just take a camping gas cooker with me, plus some plates, glasses, knives and forks. Do you never run into problems? The whole experience is fun. People watch you cook and the atmosphere is relaxed. I did one meal on a beach which almost went wrong because I didn't think about the wind blowing sand into people's food. Fortunately, I would brought a large umbrella to protect myself from the sun, so I put it around their table instead. <laughs> and you sometimes use your own flat? If the weather's bad, people come to my home instead. But it gets very crowded. Even though I've actually got enough chairs and a big table, it's not ideal. I was worried we might disturb the neighbours, but they've been all right about it. I love the temporary feel of the mobile idea, so home's not really what it's about. Mm. So, what's the future of mobile restaurants? Well, it's rather uncertain. Lots of new ones are popping up because it's become fashionable. I think health inspectors will want to check them out. That doesn't worry me because I'm a trained chef. But if someone got ill in a less serious one, we might all get a bad name. So I guess inspections are a good thing. Now, listen to part one again. Today I'm talking to Marta Stanston, who runs her own mobile restaurant. Marta, how did you get into the restaurant business? Well, I learnt to cook at college. I always wanted to open my own restaurant, but had no money, so I got a job as a chef. I had all sorts of ideas for new dishes, which the staff thought would sell, but the guy who owned the place wasn't interested. That's when a friend told me about the mobile restaurant idea. It sounded great. Mm. Tell us about it. Well, it works like this. You decide on a menu. Obviously, you have to be able to cook. Then you advertise it so people can book a meal. The most amazing thing is all the advertising's done through social networking websites. People set up tables in their sitting room or in a city car park, an empty factory, anywhere in fact. And because you know how many people you're cooking for, food doesn't get wasted. So why was it good for you? Well, various reasons. Like, I could buy all the ingredients without risk because you make customers pay in advance. The greatest advantage, though, is by having a maximum of 10 customers, I didn't need to hire a waiter. Then, of course, I could prepare everything at home. Just take a camping gas cooker with me, plus some plates, glasses, knives and forks. Do you never run into problems? The whole experience is fun. 
people watch you cook and the atmosphere is relaxed. I did one meal on a beach which almost went wrong because I didn't think about the wind blowing sand into people's food. Fortunately, I'd brought a large umbrella to protect myself from the sun, so I put it around their table instead. <laughs> and you sometimes use your own flat? If the weather's bad, people come to my home instead, but it gets very crowded. Even though I've actually got enough chairs and a big table, it's not ideal. I was worried we might disturb the neighbours, but they've been all right about it. I love the temporary feel of the mobile idea, so home's not really what it's about.、Mm. So, what's the future of mobile restaurants? Well, it's rather uncertain. Lots of new ones are popping up because it's become fashionable. I think health inspectors will want to check them out. That doesn't worry me because I'm a trained chef. But if someone got ill in a less serious one, we might all get a bad name. So I guess inspections are a good thing. Part two. You will hear a woman phoning a post office to ask about a festival in town of Kenton. Complete the note below. Write no more than one word or numbers to each blank. Good morning, Kenton Festival Box Office. How can I help you? Oh, good morning. I'm coming to Kenton for a few days' holiday next month, and a friend told me there's a festival. She gave me this number to find out about it. That's right. The festival begins on the 16th of May and goes on till the 19th. Oh, that's great! I'll be there from the 15th till the 19th. So. Could you tell me the program, please? Well, on the first day, there's the opening ceremony in the town centre. People start gathering around two o'clock to get a good place to see from, and the events will start at two forty-five and finish about five thirty. Okay, thanks. I'll make sure I get there early to get a good spot. The festival will be officially opened by the mayor. He'll just speak for a few minutes, welcoming everyone to the festival. All the town councillors will be there, and of course, lots of other people. Right. Then there'll be a performance by a band. Most years we have a children's choir, but this year the local army cadets offered to perform, and they're very good. Uh huh. After that, a community group from the town will perform a play they've written themselves. Just a short one. It's about Helen Tungate. I don't know if you've heard of her. I certainly have. She was a scientist years ago. That's right. She was born in Kenton exactly one hundred years ago. So we're celebrating her centenary. I'm a biologist, so I've always been interested in her. I didn't realise she came from Kenton. Yes. Well, all that will take place in the afternoon, and later, as the sun sets, there'll be a firework display. You should go to the park to watch, as you'll get the best view from there. And the display takes place on the opposite side of the river. It's always one of the most popular events in the festival. Sounds great. And what's happening on the other days? There are several events that go on the whole time. For example, the students of the art college have produced a number of videos, all connected with relationships between children and their grandparents. That sounds interesting. It makes a change from children and parents, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. Because the art college is in use for classes throughout the festival, the videos are being shown in Hansworth House. How do you spell the name? H A N D S W O R T H. Hansworth House. It's close to the town hall. Right. Now let me see. What else can I tell you about? Are there any displays of ballet dancing? 
I'm particularly interested in that, as I do it as a hobby. There isn't any ballet, I'm afraid, but there'll be a demonstration of traditional dances from all round the country. Well, that would be nice. Where is that being held? It's in the market in the town centre. The outdoor one, not the covered market. And it's on at two and five every afternoon of the festival, apart from the first day. Lovely. I'm interested in all kinds of dancing, so I'm sure I'll enjoy that. Mmm, I'm sure you will. And I'd really like to go to some concerts, if there are any. Yes, there are several. Three performed by professionals and one by local children. And where is it being held? It's in the library, which is in Park Street. On the 18th at 6.30 in the evening. I presume I'll need tickets for that. Yes, you can book online or you can buy them when you arrive in Kenton, either at the festival box office or from any shops displaying our logo in the windows. Well, I think that'll keep me busy for the whole of my stay in Kenton. Thank you so much for all your help. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, listen to part two again. Good morning, Kenton Festival Box Office. How can I help you? Oh, good morning. I'm coming to Kenton for a few days' holiday next month, and a friend told me there's a festival. She gave me this number to find out about it. That's right. The festival begins on the 16th of May and goes on till the 19th. Oh, that's great. I'll be there from the 15th till the 19th. So, could you tell me the programme, please? Well, on the first day, there's the opening ceremony in the town centre. People start gathering around two o'clock to get a good place to see from, and the events will start at 2.45 and finish about 5.30. OK, thanks. I'll make sure I get there early to get a good spot. The festival will be officially opened by the mayor. He'll just speak for a few minutes, welcoming everyone to the festival. All the town councillors will be there, and, of course, lots of other people. Right. Then there'll be a performance by a band. Most years we have a children's choir, but this year the local army cadets offered to perform, and they're very good. Uh-huh. After that, a community group from the town will perform a play they've written themselves. Just a short one. It's about Helen Tungate. I don't know if you've heard of her. I certainly have. She was a scientist years ago. That's right. She was born in Kenton exactly 100 years ago, so we're celebrating her centenary. I'm a biologist, so I've always been interested in her. I didn't realise she came from Kenton. Yes. Well, all that will take place in the afternoon, and later, as the sun sets, there'll be a firework display. You should go to the park to watch, as you'll get the best view from there. And the display takes place on the opposite side of the river. It's always one of the most popular events in the festival. Sounds great. And what's happening on the other days? There are several events that go on the whole time. For example, the students of the art college have produced a number of videos, all connected with relationships between children and their grandparents. That sounds interesting. It makes a change from children and parents, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly. Because the art college is in use for classes throughout the festival, the videos are being shown in Hansworth House. How do you spell the name? H-A-N-D-S-W-O-R-T-H. Hansworth House. It's close to the town hall. Right. Now, let me see, what else can I tell you about? Are there any displays of ballet dancing? 
I'm particularly interested in that, as I do it as a hobby. There isn't any ballet, I'm afraid, but there'll be a demonstration of traditional dances from all round the country. Well, that would be nice. Where is that being held? It's in the market in the town centre. The outdoor one, not the covered market. And it's on at two and five every afternoon of the festival, apart from the first day. Lovely. I'm interested in all kinds of dancing, so I'm sure I'll enjoy that. Mmm, I'm sure you will. And I'd really like to go to some concerts, if there are any. Yes, there are several. Three performed by professionals and one by local children. And where is it being held? It's in the library, which is in Park Street. On the 18th at 6.30 in the evening. I presume I'll need tickets for that. Yes, you can book online or you can buy them when you arrive in Kenton, either at the festival box office or from any shops displaying our logo in the windows. Well, I think that'll keep me busy for the whole of my stay in Kenton. Thank you so much for all your help. You're welcome. I hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you. Goodbye. That is the end of the listening section. Now, stop work on this section and do the other parts of the test.